today we're talking about flash photography and specifically adjustable flash photography. When you're thinking about using a adjustable flash, think about sunlight versus overcast cloudy day. If you have a flash and you're shooting directly in their face, it's like sunlight. If you look at this photo here, this is a harsh light. You got shadows everywhere going across people's faces. Uh, some of the African-American people are harder to see. This is just a, a nightmare when it comes to flash photography. I actually tried to use the fill flash on this and the, the sunlight is just too bright. It's a little bit later in the day and it just didn't work. Um, so you really have to be careful. Try to get people either looking directly into the sunlight, which is going to make them squint, or looking away from the sunlight and using a fill flash, uh, using a flash like this. Uh, in sunlight, this is the only time, or one of the rare times, I should say, that I use direct flash. Uh, most of the time, I bounce the flash, as you can see here, off the ceiling. So when you're looking, your camera's here, off, to the, off the ceiling, it's like, it's like a cloud. It's a diffusion. It lets the light go very soft. Here's a shot I did. I used a little fill flash on this. I just had a flash, literally a little bit of a bounce on it, just to make sure I had light in his eyes. But the cloudy day, there's plenty of perfect light on his face, plenty of perfect light on the car. Everything worked out perfect by bouncing a flash and just using a soft, cloudy day. When you're shooting direct flash, this is your general result. You're going to get a shadow on the wall behind them. As you can see on this young lady here, she's got on a black sweater and there's barely any definition in between the, shad the, the shadow and her sweater. And that makes for just kind of an ugly photo. Not that she's an ugly subject, just an ugly photo. If you bounce the light, this light, this light actually I bounced behind me, over my head, off the wall behind me, which happened to be a mirror, and onto her face. Nice, soft, even spread over her face. This is the kind of light you want, and this is the kind of the effect you want when you're shooting flash photography. I use this technique a lot when shooting group photos. If you bounce the light up off the ceiling, everybody gets lit. You have very little shadow problem. The only time you have to be careful is watch what kind of light you get in their eyes, which I'll show you a sample of that later. But most of the time when you're shooting group photos, here's what you get. Nice, nice soft light over everybody. As you can see here, one of the key things when shooting photos, try not to put them up against the wall, especially if you have to use direct flash. If you have a point and shoot camera that has direct flash, just a flash that bounces straight out, try to get them away from the wall. That will minimize the flash behind their head and shoulders, okay? You can also point the camera down a little bit at your subject, hold it up a little higher and point it down. That will also minimize flash. And if you have a direct flash, don't get too close to them because that will also make a harsh flash. Pull, step back a, a little bit. Soften the light, soften the flash, soften the shadows. That's the easiest thing to do when you have a direct light flash. Stay away from the wall, stay away from them. This was shot with a direct flash. This is one of the few times I use direct flash and it's simply because he's got a hat on and if I bounce the flash his eyes are going to be covered. Now, as you see by the depth, A, I have no shadows to worry about behind him but the scene behind him is so dark it falls off very dark very quickly. The flash only goes out a certain depth and then it falls off and then whatever's behind it goes dark. So what I like to do is do what they call balancing the light. As you can see here, again, direct flash, just so because she's got a hat on, but I open the ASA or ISO, depending on your terminology, it's the same thing. It's the sensitivity to the chip. When you open that ISO, it allows more ambient light into the chip, which helps balance the light on your subject with the flash with what you have in the background. That's called balancing the light. Here's Jeremy in the fitness center. You may or may not hold him. This was shot without a flash. And as you can see under fluorescent lighting, you get dark circles on the eyes. 
Now, again, I was shooting this under natural light with a high ISO slash ASA, so that allows the background to be as light as the foreground. What I did, though, is I moved in, I bounced the flash off the wall or mirror behind me, and it filled his eyes. Now, he's still got a little bit of a raccoon eye, but not nearly as bad as it was in the other photo, especially under fluorescent lights. Fluorescent lights is, are the worst for lighting eyes. They're horrible. So always use a fill flash whenever you can under fluorescent lights, but try not to use direct flash. Try and bounce it off the back wall or the side wall or the ceiling to soften it. Okay, and last but not least, don't be afraid to use natural light. This was shot with just a window light. Uh, just open the window, nice soft light bounces in, takes care of my subjects. I don't have to do a thing but point a camera and shoot. Easy way to get nice soft natural light is using window light or clouds softening light. That's your tip for the day. Mm -hmm.